Vibes takes you on a journey across the United States, experiencing veganism in a positive new light. Today's episode is sure to pull at your heartstrings. We're exploring the powerful story of Holly, a 20-year-old horse about to be shipped to slaughter, how she was rescued and moved across three states, and what her life looks like today at Sapphire Sanctuary. We'll also get into the special horse-human connection and the dark realities facing wild horses in the U.S. today. The good news? Going vegan can make a sizable impact. Let's find out why. is actually a quarter horse and Arab mixed beauty and descendant of the record-setting stallion Hollywood Dunnett. Although her grandfather lived the pampered and glamorous life of a Hollywood show horse, Holly has not been so lucky. Holly dedicated her days to serving humans as a trail horse and in a riding program for kids. When we learned that Holly's days were numbered, the V-Kind team set out to bring her to Sapphire Sanctuary so she could spend the rest of her days in dignity. Special thanks to Mira Patel and everyone who supported V-Kind's GoFundMe campaign for this project. We made it happen. The team at Better Piggies Rescue, as seen in episode two of Vibes, helped us transport Holly from Arizona to California. The unity and support within the vegan community continues to amaze us. Herbivorous Butcher even donated their juicy, taste bud tingling bacon, which vegan chef Nicole Dershway used in some homemade sandwiches for the team, bringing along her specially crafted vegan horse treats for us to share with Holly at Sapphire Sanctuary. Special thanks to BB Kids for donating these adorable custom vegan plates to Sapphire. At Sapphire, Holly will spend her days in pastures instead of pain, finally living freely with humans off her back. Let's go meet Holly in her new California paradise. From Hollywood she came, and to the rolling hills of the valley she returns. Inspired by V-Kind's rescue, celebrity TV host and vegan activist Allison Spellman traveled to Sapphire Sanctuary with us to help create Holly's GoFundMe campaign. Hi, I'm Allison Spellman, and I'm here with Esta, the founder of Sapphire Sanctuary right here in Los Angeles. And joining us is a very, very special lady, Miss Holly. I found out about Holly through Star from Be Kind, and Star was actually the one who saved her. I have to give her the credit, actually. She saw her story on social media and needed to step in to rescue this horse. And this horse has served most of her life Uh, serving people, giving trail rides, and doing really things that are above and beyond her physical means. She's got arthritis, she's got a bad knee, she's about 100 pounds underweight, um, and all these things were created by the excess use that she had to go through while serving people and being a trail horse. So after she could no longer be serviceably sound, they were going to drop her off at auction and ultimately, potentially, it's not a good outcome when they do that. So when Star stepped in, she contacted me to see if there was anything we could do to help give her a retirement and a happy life. And of course, we said yes. So Esther, can you tell me about Sapphire Sanctuary? How did it come about? And what are your future plans? (laughs) So Sapphire Sanctuary was founded in 2009 and it kind of happened after the economy collapsed. So after I had pretty much lost everything, I had nothing else to lose but to do my dream of always having a horse rescue. So if people are not familiar with what's going on, we have the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, who manages the federal lands that the cattle ranchers have contracts on. Cattle ranchers get cheap grazing land for their cattle, so they are systematically removing the wild horses to feed the cattle. What happens to these wild horses? They go in these holding pens 
or they are deliberately shipped to slaughter. This is part of the agreement our government has. Wait, what does all of this mean? The Bureau of Land Management, also known as the BLM, claims that wild horses are destroying natural public lands due to their rapid reproduction, but data acquired from the BLM itself tells a different story. According to research gathered by organizations like the American Wild Horses Campaign and the Cloud Foundation, the BLM has blamed wild horse populations for the destruction of public lands in order to divert the public's attention from the actual cause of destruction of public lands, livestock. Currently, the BLM and U.S. Forest Service allocate 238 million acres to privately owned livestock and just 31.6 million acres to wild horses. In fact, federal grazing lands for wild horses have shrunk by a staggering 22.2 million acres since the implementation of the Wild and Free Roaming Horses and Burrows Act of 1971. Clearly, it isn't wild horses responsible for the damage to public lands. As a result of so-called wild horse overpopulation, taxpayers unknowingly subsidize the cruel roundup of wild horses every single year. These horses are kept in publicly funded holding facilities at a cost of $47.5 million per year, where horses are put up for adoption and adopters receive $1,000 per horse. Investigations of several journalists reveal that numerous adopters sell their newly adopted wild horses to people known as kill buyers at horse auctions in order to turn over a profit. Kill buyers are those who purchase horses for slaughter. The BLM has made recent amends to the program to try and prevent horses from being resold to their death, but according to adopters, these measures are not being followed up on. Regardless of what happens to these horses, the cause is clear. The protected wild horse population is being used as a scapegoat for the destruction of public lands caused by livestock. The solution, according to ESTA, is going vegan. Another thing I'd like to bring up actually is uh, the sadness today about the wild horse roundup in Wyoming, um, which is directly related to the cattle industry. If people just changed one thing and became vegan, there would be no more wild horse roundups. Everybody is doing all these petitions, all these signatures, all these protests, but are they really making the change within themselves to change this the BLM from stopping this. That's the only way this is ever going to stop. If we don't want to have wild horse roundups, we must become plant-based. The horse industry in and of itself is a $52 billion industry. And that includes, you know, racing, showing, breeding, um, and the wild horses. During the Middle Ages, knights constructed protective armor and competed on horseback in tournaments, and others bred herds of horses for food, transportation, and riding. Meanwhile, other ethnic groups used horses to conquer new lands. Genghis Khan, the fearsome Mongol invader and founder of the largest empire ever known, dispatched skilled soldiers in all directions to take over regions and expand his territory to unprecedented levels, all on horseback. Never before had humans used horses to cross such vast distances and conquer new lands. That brings us to the 1800s, where humans further refined the domestication of horses for use in agriculture and transportation. On farms, horses plowed fields. On roads, they transported food, supplies, and mail across long distances. In the U.S., horses carried mail across the country in saddlebags, enduring harsh weather, outlaws and robbers, wild animals, and saddle sores. During World War I, from 1914 to 1918, horses were vital to warfare, riding into fresh territory and battlefields with supply wagons full of artillery. These horses suffered greatly, often dying of wounds or famine. People and horses alike were in need of food, and troops often did their best to provide it. Some even gave up their blankets to keep their horses warm on cold, rainy nights. By dawn, horses would have often eaten the blankets out of pure starvation. 
Here we are today, where horses play more varied roles in our lives than ever before. Traditional communities such as the Amish still use horses for agriculture, while others simply keep them as domesticated pets. Horse racing, competitive riding, tourism, and equine therapy are other common uses for our graceful friends. Sadly, horse racing is a world full of horrific injury, drug misuse, breakdown, and slaughter. While onlookers dress up and sip mint juleps, horses flee for their lives. Horses employed in racing are compelled to gallop at such high speeds, they regularly injure themselves and even suffer lung hemorrhages, where blood vessels in the lungs burst during exercise due to overexertion. Even today, there is little accountability for thoroughbred horses, and most owners, trainers, and spectators in the world of horse racing simply care about profits. Let's make history and help these beautiful animals live fulfilling lives as they were meant to, in their natural state with humans off their backs. When people ride their horses, what do they purchase? They purchase a leather saddle, they have a leather bridle. They're not thinking about the types of equipment, the things that they use or the other creatures that are involved in what we would consider a pleasurable experience. And even the horses, they can smell when they have the hide of an animal on their back. They can smell when you're vegan. And there's a whole different energy that you exude when you become plant-based. The horses really love that and respect that. Um, they think it's super important that we understand where their point of view is, where they're coming from. Um, these are vegan animals. They don't eat anything like that. <laughs> and really neither would sh should we. Our teeth are actually the same as a horse. We are meant to grind. We don't have canines like a dog or a cat. And so when we become one like the horse, then the horses want to become one with us. The human-horse connection is certainly nothing new. Humans domesticated our equine friends between 5000 and 3000 BC. So it should come as no surprise that horses demonstrate a level of attachment to human beings. Although horses don't form attachment bonds with individual humans, they do regard us as safe havens in general. Research has shown that horses are more relaxed around people, demonstrated by their elevated heart rates when we leave them alone and the lowering of their heart rates when we return. Hippocrates hinted at the therapeutic potential of horseback riding as early as the 4th century, and the Oxford Hospital used equine therapy to help rehabilitate wounded World War I soldiers in the early 1900s. Equine-assisted therapy, known as EAT, took off in the U.S. and Canada in the 1960s and expanded to the field of psychotherapy, helping treat patients who suffer from neurological disorders and mental health challenges. As horses are sensitive to the emotions of humans, EAT patients with anxiety notice how their mood impacts a horse's behavior and learn to focus on the apprehension of the animal as a way to calm themselves, in turn reducing their own anxious response. The patient's connection with the horse has been found to encourage anxious individuals to remain calm and take responsibility for their own thoughts. As horses react only to patients' emotions rather than their physical appearance or past mistakes, patients are able to trust horses and build self-esteem in the process of equine therapy. Can you tell me what is an obstacle that you face for Sapphire? Our biggest obstacle has been, you know, raising funds. Um, you know, re saving the horses, that's the easy part. Getting the volunteers, everybody's been amazing. Um, we actually have a six month waiting list for people to come to orientation and volunteer. But funding is really our, our challenge and getting our own place. Uh, we wouldn't have to spend so much money on board if we had our own property. So that is our dream. So on that property, one more question. What would you do if you had this property, besides having 10 to 20 acres, as you said, would be the perfect place for you? Are there different programs you would roll out for us? It's, what would we people be able to do and experience at your future sanctuary? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So the experience that people could have at our sanctuary, the dream is to create a rescue, rehabilitation, and retreat center. So we would rescue horses, 
rehabilitate ones that maybe people don't know how to rehabilitate so that they could find an adoptive home, and then the retreat center where we have our meditations, our sound baths, um, you know, movie screenings, things like that, or, you know, Airbnb retreats where people can come for a weekend, stay in a yurt, and just have the experience of being around horses for a few days. I hope we can make that happen for you. I just Thank know you. that there's someone out there that would love to be a part of this and possibly donate some land. Yeah, that would be a dream come true for us. That would be, I'd be kissing the ground. Well, can you tell us um, and our viewers at home how they can find out more about Sapphire Sanctuary? So to find out about Sapphire Sanctuary, Sapphire is spelled S-A-F-F as in Frank, Y-R-E, sapphiresanctuary.org. We have a, uh, a join us page which has all our links to our volunteer, our meetup groups, our educational programs, and of course all the horses that we've saved. Amazing. And you can also find them on Be Kind of. So. That's right. Yes, We absolutely. love to support the sanctuaries and we love what you're doing. Thank you. You're, you can tell your heart and soul is in this whole project. And just with us being here today, it has relaxed. It has calmed me. I just feel so centered. So thank you for opening up Sapphire Sanctuary to all of us here at Big Play. Thank you. Really, our hearts go out in gratitude to Star, of course, to you as well. Thank to you. really have this opportunity. We all have this amazing opportunity. You think how much that beautiful Holly has served man for so long. And here's a real opportunity that we can give back to her. And I'll tell you here at Sapphire Sanctuary, as soon as I came here, this is such a place that rescue, it rehabilitates, and it restores hope. It restores hope and love to beautiful creatures like Holly. So if you have it in your heart, I mean, truly, Every little bit helped and you can help her finally have the life and the dignity and the love she so deserves. We'd like to give a special thanks to Esta from Sapphire Sanctuary and to all of you for watching at home. If you'd like to help these beautiful animals, donate today at sapphiresanctuary.com. And don't forget to check out Esta's empowering story in her memoir, Changing Horses one woman's journey through horse racing, horse rescue, and horse reflection. Join us next time on Be Kind Vibes as we discover America's new favorite vegan destination, plant-powered fast food. No plants felt pain in the making of this video.